Hello everyone, my name is Karen and we need to talk about a book that I finished yesterday, which is called The Complete Guide to POI and Early Menopause by Dr. Hannah Short and Mandy Leonhard. So here's the deal. I don't normally re um, review like texts like this on this channel, but this book was so, so good that I wanted to chat about it because I think it could help a whole bunch of people. POI stands for premature ovarian insufficiency and early menopause means that you go through menopause early. I don't fit into either of these categories and yet I was really drawn to this book because I have been having some symptoms that tell me that perimenopause might be headed my way or I might be in the very early stages. So I decided that I would read this just for a more um, overview of what could be coming and it blew my mind. So first of all, I want to just say that from the very beginning, I was drawn in um, just because of the level of warmth that this book was written in. Like, the authors have such warmth and such compassion for patients that they see or for the people that they're helping through this book and it just shines through every single page um there was a quote that spoke to me and it says you are so much more than your diagnosis and always will be so as i said i don't have either of these but that just spoke to me and other stuff that i have going on my in my life and just like the patient centered empowering way this book is written is just incredible and it's not just that one quote it's like time and time again throughout the book through words and and actions almost uh that that quote is like embodied in this book with the warmth and the compassion and all that if that's what you need if you need somebody to say hey i see you i'm here for you you're gonna get that in this book it is so just inclusive of everybody that could be going through these <laughs> or menopause because i will say even if you just want to know more about menopause like this is your book so the title while it's specific to what they wanted to talk about it is so much more than that um but like i said it's inclusive so let's say that you are a black woman who often finds it difficult to uh be seen and heard by medical professionals you're represented in here and you're heard and you're just really seen and advocated for in this book. Let's say that you are a trans man and you are still going to be going through some of these things. You're also represented in this book. Um, if you have a disability, you're represented in this book. So there, there's not just this one mindset of who goes through menopause, but it's such a wide range of people that will be impacted by this and the book really accounts for that and does it in a very respectful way um but in addition also like maybe guys should also <laughs> read this book because um there's a whole chapter on like uh, menopause in the workplace and how it impacts uh people and how maybe there should be a little bit more um done to kind of support people going through this so in addition, something else I want to say is just the my the number of mind blowing facts that are in here. I learned so much about so many random pieces of information. I don't know that I needed to know, but I do know now, and I find them fascinating. For example, did you know that the average age for a girl's first period in 1840 was 16 and a half? what like if you are 16 and a half now and you don't have your period like you're gonna need some medical attention in fact the book said that if you are i think 14 or 15 and not showing signs of being ready to start your period that you need medical help so that was super interesting also did you know that each month there's one follicle that produces an egg but you're actually losing 1,000 follicles each month because they're all competing to like make the best egg or something like that. And so 1,000 of them are lost every single month that you ov ovulate. What else? Oh, I have to find it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh my gosh, there's so much. I keep like putting my fingers in stuff that I'm not ready to um say yet, but that I want to tell you later. Menopause. Um, Obviously, I think that you know that it happens to women as they get older, but I guess I never really thought of it 
pertaining to other animals, but I always assume that like if you're a mammal, you're going to go through a sim similar process, and that is not true. So apart from humans, menopause is currently only known in beluga whales, narwhals, orcas, short-finned pilot whales, and giraffes. Like, did you know that you needed to know that? But now you do know that. So that was super cool. Um, also, this book is so with it in terms of where we are in our current world. So climate change is discussed. I know you probably have no idea why you would need to discuss climate change in a book like this, but let me tell you. Climate change and its resultant and its resultant negative impact on air quality in particular is likely to pay, play an increasing toxin related role in the development of early menopause in the coming years unless our world's carbon emissions are dramatically reduced. Did you know that there is a correlation between air quality and early menopause? Now you know, now you know, right? So this book is so important and all the stuff it tells you and all the information that is just like blowing your mind every single time throughout the book, like every single page. I highlighted this whole thing. Okay, also it's fiercely feminist. And I think that's probably the last thing I'll say about it unless I can think of something else, but it is so fiercely feminist. So um, there is so much in here about like ways that women are struggling to get their medical needs met. And one of the things they talk about is basically how there's loads of medical research studies. However, loads of the drugs, even though they're given to people in a variety of genders, have only been tested in males. And so there's not as much data on what these drugs will do to a female body. And so that's something that is called out in here, among other things. One more thing, one more thing. Sorry, this is very, my um review that I already posted on Instagram was very like well formulated. This is like completely all over the place because I'm so excited about this book and I just want to tell you about it. Um, Throughout the book, there are these pictures that uh, kind of serve as like chapter transitions. The main focus of the pictures is always black. Like that is not just a box for the authors to check, but it is truly like embodied in their work that um, that black women are represented in here and discussed and because they have unique issues that are not true for everybody. For example, they are less likely to have access to HRT, which is a huge part of this book. I probably should tell you some of the stuff that's talked about in here, but those are the things that as like a person that is not quite going through this, that those are the things that really spoke out to me. Um, but they kind of talk about early menopause. They talk about um, how to get diagnosed, about some treatments you could have through HRT. They also um, talk about more natural treatments, which I super appreciated because I'm pretty sure I will never be able to do HRT. In fact, I'm pretty sure that once I get closer to menopause that I will be put on tamoxifen or some other hormone sucker. Um, so I'm going to have the opposite of HRT, which is terrifying now that I've read this book and I see all the negative implications of not being on HRT. Anyway, um, they talk about like lifestyle and how to just take good care of yourself as a person. So even if you are not the main focus of this book, like I was not, you still need to read this. How do you take care of your body? There is talk about relationships and how that could be impacted by going through POI or early menopause. There's talk about sex in here with amazing, amazing resources, like really positive, um, like sex positive, body positive sort of resources that are in here. There's talk about fertility, which was like my jam. Okay. So I think that I don't have kids based on just the path that my life has taken. But when I think about it now, like I actually don't want kids anymore. <laughs> um, I am so happy with what I'm doing with my career, with what I'm doing with my traveling, with um, my connections to my family and the little people like my nephew that I get to spend time with. Like I do not want children and there is this whole section of the book about being really positive about that that 
it's not just the standard that we need to just really appreciate women um, who and people who don't want to have children and how full their lives are, even without that in their lives. Like being a parent is not the only thing that makes your life valuable that was in here and that is another reason why i absolutely love this book if you are interested in what someone in your life might need to go through um on their journey to menopause if you have either of these um kind of umbrellas of conditions um or if you're like me and you're just really curious and want to know what's like coming down the road so to say um i would highly highly recommend this book um, Hannah and I have kind of become like internet friends in the past couple weeks um, because she is so warm, so amazing, and she also really loves books. So quality authors in this book for sure. Let me know if you guys have any questions about it. I think due to a glitch, there might be a possibility of me getting a second book of this on accident and so I am kind of debating if I want to do a giveaway or if I want to like give it to like one of my doctors to give to like a patient or something like that oh that was one other thing that I thought was interesting not about the book but just in general so I apologize that I'm like making this go on and on forever it seems like GPs in the UK do loads more than they do in the US so um I don't know if that's true or not i'm just curious but like i since the time of like starting my period have gone to a gynecologist every single year um used to be for a pap smear every single year but now they only do a pap every few years and in between that they just do like a pelvic exam and a breast exam and then we have time to talk about whatever i want to talk about and like also um because i have had a few symptoms that I think might be the very, very early stages of perimenopause. I like told my um, gynecologist and she's like, oh, like, let's meet. So like, I don't even think I need to meet with her, but on Tuesday we're meeting. Um, and it seems like in the UK that all that would be directed to your GP. And then if your GP wanted you to go see a gynecologist, then you would go. And, um, that's just interesting because I feel like that would make it so much more difficult for me to get all my questions answered at my GP's appointment because here I give all my gynecological questions to my gynecologist. I give all my medicine questions to my pharmacist. I give all my um, regular health sort of questions to my GP or my primary care physician. Um, my eye doctor questions go to my eye doctor. My dermatologist questions go to my dermatologist who I see once a year for like a, um, a whole body skin check. I just think that if my understanding is correct, like GPs have even more stress than I thought they had. Oh my gosh. Anyway, that is just a side note, not related to this book at all. Please read this. It's amazing. And I love you guys. Bye. <laughs>